So today we'll be looking at five different coolers that are compatible to AIM4 platform that offer the best cooling option, the best noise option, and the best aftermarket price to performance option. Now I know there's plenty of coolers out there on the market that are compatible to AIM4 platform, but I believe these five offer a good variety for $60 and under. And we won't only be testing their cooling performance, but also ease of installation and their AIM4 compatibility out of the box versus getting it from a kit and also their build quality. So we'll be looking at this thing from multiple different perspectives in this AIM4 cooler showdown. So this will be pretty interesting to see which cooler is the most well-rounded option and appeals to you personally. So let's get into it. Hey guys, it's JD from JD Tech here and welcome back to the channel where we discuss PC passion, tech reviews, unboxings, and setup design. So if you're into that sort of thing, consider subscribing. The coolers we're looking at are the FSP Windale 4, CryoRig H5, Cooler Masters Master Liquid 120 and Hyper 212 Evo, and the AMD Stealth Cooler from the Ryzen 1400. The CPU we'll be using for this testing is the Ryzen 1400 with 65 watts of thermal power. We'll be testing the coolers at the Ryzen 1400 stock speeds of 3.2 gigahertz and an overclock of 3.9 gigahertz. All the coolers will be tested in the RAID Max Sigma case to help illustrate real world application for these coolers. The RAID Max Sigma has demonstrated great airflow performance with mesh ventilation coming from the front and top of the case and an open air chassis design with no hard drive cages and optical drive bays blocking airflow. For monitoring, I used Hardware Monitor and AMD Ryzen Master to compare temperatures, which were consistent with their comparative readings. To stress the CPU, I ran Ida 64 and for the Master Liquid 120 I ran the test for over an hour to make sure the liquid reached its heat capacity since liquid takes longer to heat up and also the same thermal paste and the same amount of thermal paste was applied for each cooler. Let's go through the rundown of the design and installation for these coolers starting with the stock cooler for the Ryzen 1400. This is the AMD Stealth Cooler which is not the same as the Wraith Spire Cooler from the 1700. The Stealth Cooler has a lower profile and the block is entirely aluminum. It has braided cable as as well as all the Ryzen stock coolers do, and they're very compact, maximizing space compatibility for the dim slots and high clearance. Installation was very easy, and all that needs to be done is use the pre-existing backplate provided with any AIM4 motherboard and screw in the stock cooler. The Hyper 212 Evo is no stranger to most. It features a 4 6mm copper heat pipe design with direct contact to the CPU package. It also has a 120mm PWM fan and a height of 158.5mm. The 212 Evo is actually pretty good on clearance depending on the motherboard and case. For installation, it's the same as the standard installation which you will need to get an AIM4 compatibility kit. Install the standoffs using the pre-existing backplate and use the X-shaped mounting arm to secure the cooler. It's a bit tricky at first, but the cooler is secure. Next up is the CryoRig H5, which does not support AIM4 out of the box, but you can request or purchase a kit separately. The H5 is the largest cooler out of the entire lineup. That means there are obstacles when it comes to clearance. The H5 features a massive cooling fin design which stands at 160 millimeters and even taller if you decide to shift the fan upwards to accommodate clearance for the dim slots. It has a 4-6 millimeter heat pipe design with a copper nickel plated base. The H5 rocks a 140 millimeter fan and is mounted on metal clips with rubber plates on the mounting holes and has a braided 4 pin cable. Now for installation, this one was pretty tricky. It uses the back plate included like the others and the standoffs are installed with a cap facing down. Next, install the bracket on the standoff and screw on the caps onto the standoffs. Now there is wiggle room for the standoffs but this will be tightened once the cooler is secured and screwed into place. Make sure to press up on the back plate behind the motherboard to lift the mounting bracket otherwise the screws in the H5 cooler won't reach. This makes it a bit tricky with such a large cooler. The FSP Windale 4 is pretty new to the market, but let's see how it compares to the other coolers. This cooler is a little bit different from any cooler I've assembled before. It has a four copper heat pipe design with direct contact to the CPU package. It stands at 157.5 millimeters tall, but it gives pretty good clearance for the 120 millimeter fan that doesn't block the dim slots. The fan mounts on rubber mounts, which get pushed into the heatsink. This cooler has AIM4 support right out of the box, which is really nice, but this mounting is a bit tricky as well. 
well. For the mounting process, install the back plate and put the pins through the bottom, but be careful because they're pretty thin and will fall out if you try flipping over the motherboard like me. I'd recommend installing one pin at a time and screw in one of its corresponding standoffs to secure it into the motherboard. Then use the AIM-4 braces to place on top of the standoffs, then cap them off with the provided caps. The weird thing is, is that the AIM-4 braces work only in this position, so the cooler has to face either the top or bottom of the case. Next, install the cooler mounting plate on the notches of the aluminum block, then screw the cooler into place into the AIM-4 brace. This installation has a lot of parts and it's tricky, and it only faces up or down, which can be a problem for some if their case doesn't have top ventilation. But the cooler is very secure, and there's full clearance for the dim slots. The last cooler is the Master Liquid 120 from Cooler Master. The Master Liquid is also available in a 240mm configuration as well. Clearance for this is pretty good considering this is a 120mm variation and it's also an AIO liquid cooler. The radiator is aluminum. It features a push slash pull airflow design with the two 120 millimeter fans. The tubing is FEP underneath, but it's sleeved, which definitely improves aesthetics since FEP tubing is my least favorite. The pump is lightweight, but surprisingly light for its size. Also, the Cooler Master logo shines with a white LED. Overall, it looks pretty good and it's built well. As for the installation, this was the easiest AM4 installation yet. I wish more coolers made it this simple. To install, there are two mounting braces that fit onto the rim of the pump. Screw in the braces with the two screws for each brace, then and use the original motherboard configuration with the backplate and plastic mounts that are already installed as you take the motherboard out of the box and secure the pump onto the plastic mounts using the tabs on the sides and screw them down to tighten. Nothing even needs to be changed about the motherboard config from the box. This is by far the easiest installation. Now on to the cooling performance of each of these coolers. Here's the results for all the coolers using the Ryzen 1400 at stock speeds of 3.2 gigahertz. Each of these coolers were left at their normal fan curves and the results are actually quite surprising with most of the temps being uniform. The Master Liquid 120 has the coolest idle temp, while the FSP Windale 4 has the lowest stress temperature at 37.5 degrees Celsius. The stock cooler runs the hottest out of these five coolers, which is to be expected anyways. Now, even though the Windale 4 appears to be the coolest out of the other options, there is still variation with temperature readings based on many different factors. Even though the ambient temperature remained the same, temperature will vary by a degree or so around its plateau point. And to clear up any confusion, the Master Liquid was stressed for an hour to compensate for the time it takes for the liquid to reach its heat capacity. With the 1400 overclocked to 3.9 gigahertz, it gets even more interesting as the Hyper 212 Evo takes the lead this time around. The stock cooler is predictably running the hottest thermals. Again, these results are mostly uniform with a degree or so of each other. The Window 4 and Master Liquid 120 have the lowest idle temps and respectably close load temps. The Cryorig H5 is marginally cooler than the Master Liquid 120 and the Window 4, but again, they are practically the same due to minor temperature variation around the plateau point. Let's hear how these coolers sound while the CPU is idling and under load. And keep in mind the case fans and PSU fan are both audible in these recordings. The Master Liquid 120, Windell 4, and the Stealth Cooler are the most silent options of the five. The H5 and the 212 Evo are the loudest under load. So let's factor in price, performance, noise, clearance, and ease of installation. The stock cooler is the cheapest option, of course, as it's included with the purchase of the 1400, and the 212 Evo and Windale 4 are around the same price point of $26 US. Both have similar cooling capabilities, but the 212 Evo is a lot more audible than the Windale 4. While the Windale 4 is harder to install, in my opinion, it is rather limited to either an up or down facing configuration. Both coolers can pose some clearance issues, but both are reasonable with space efficiency. But remember, the 212 Evo needs an AIM-4 kit while the Windale 4 has AIM-4 support right out of the box. The H5 comes in at $47 US and the Master Liquid 120 is 
$60. The H5 is cheaper, of course, but produces more noise and has a lot more clearance issues for smaller cases and room for dim slots. While the Master Liquid 120 offers the most available space, obviously. Master Liquid 120 is matched in terms of performance with the Windale 4 and 212 Evo for the Ryzen 1400, which are significantly cheaper options, but they're both pretty exceptional at cooling for their price. The Master Liquid 120 offers the easiest installation by far out of all these options and the highest quality parts as well, not to mention the most appealing in my opinion. If you want the best price to performance, I would look at the Windale 4 and the Hyper 212 Evo with the differences between the two that I explained previously. If you want an all-in-one solution with no clearance issues, low noise output, and good cooling performance and appealing aesthetics, I would go for the Master Liquid 120. There is a 240 variant which I have not yet tested. The H5 is an appealing air cooler in my opinion, but definitely not the quietest. It has a respectable cooling performance, but the Windale 4 and 212 Evo match it in terms of cooling, but perhaps with the CPU with a higher thermal output, the H5 can provide more headroom for overclocking. You do need an AIM4 kit to install, which is something to think about. If you don't plan on overclocking or really stressing the CPU, then stick with the Stealth cooler, of course. Although I would recommend an option like the 212 Evo or Windale 4 if money is tight and you would like to ensure the longevity of your processor. I can't tell you the best option for you because everyone has different preferences that these coolers can appeal to. Personally, these are all good options, but my personal favorite is the Master Liquid 120 for its extremely easy installation, good cooling performance, and peeling aesthetics. A very well-rounded option for a higher price bracket than the 212 Evo and Windale 4. My other favorite is the Windale 4, but with reservations since its configuration is limited and the installation is a hassle, but it runs very cool and incredibly quiet for a fair price. That's my opinion though. The 212 Evo is still and always will be a personal favorite of mine for its fair price and great cooling capabilities, but the Windale 4 deserves some recognition too. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the AM4 Cooler Showdown, possibly part one. I may extend this episode, but it takes a long time to account for not only cooling performance, but also ease of installation, clearance, and other factors that aren't measured in numbers. It's always easy to compare numbers, but there's always more that goes into it than just that. So I wanted to work with only five coolers because it takes a long time to consider and present it into a comparable report for you guys. This did take a while to make, so leave a like if you appreciate it and it would be very much appreciated if you did so and if you're new here consider subscribing to see more videos like this one thank you all so much for watching and i'll catch you in the next one so today we're looking at five five huh. so today we're looking at five different aim for clue so today we'll be looking at so today we'll be looking at uh and also the best aftermarket price to performance so uh we, we la 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 you make me feel like ooh la la la. These five offer a good variety. I know there's plenty of markets. There's plenty of markets out there for markets because markets are markets, you know. So today we'll be looking at five different. Just put in that five after I said five. Ugh, jeez.